Are drum brakes vastly inferior to disc brakes? Hi, I'm Sean with Summit Racing. Today we'll cover a few key aspects of drum brakes that will hopefully give you a solid footing on the pros and cons and separate the myths from the facts. But before we get started, please be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our latest videos. Like a lot of automotive topics, especially when performance is considered, there are always trade-offs. Though there's a lot to like about disc brakes, you shouldn't necessarily run to ditch your drums anytime soon. So what are drum brakes and how do they work? Let's take a closer look at the brakes on this 1960 Volkswagen truck. Even though this truck doesn't have the horsepower of modern trucks, back in 1960 it was ready to carry loads similar to our three-quarter ton trucks that we have today. And to bring all that weight to a stop, a manual four-wheel drum brake system. So what is actually happening underneath the drum when you hit the brakes? Let's pull off the drum and take a look. With the drum removed, we can see the shoes, the wheel cylinders, the adjusters, and springs. Now, if this were the rear drum, there would also be a lever and cable for the parking brake. Drum brakes will be slightly different between vehicles as manufacturers created different methods to stop their vehicles, but the principles are all the same. So let's talk about stopping power. In most situations, a healthy drum brake system, like what is on this truck, will have no problem bringing your vehicle to a stop. In fact, you can still find drum brakes on semi-trucks and other pieces of heavy equipment today. And the reason why? It's obvious. Take a look at the brake shoe and the brake drum. See all that surface area? The brake shoes have a bigger contact patch than disc brake pads, which result in more friction to bring the vehicle to a stop. So there's no question that drum brakes have adequate stopping power. But as we alluded to above, there is a trade-off, something called brake fade. So what is brake fade? Brake fade is essentially the loss of stopping power due to overheating of the brake surface material. Now both discs and drums are susceptible to brake fade, but it's less of an issue with disc brakes because they're able to dissipate the heat quicker than drums due to the friction surface being exposed to fresh air. Disc brakes will take this a step further by adding vents in between the friction surfaces to create even more surface area. However, some muscle cars and heavy duty applications added ribbing to the outside of the drum to help dissipate heat better, but they still don't compare to the efficiency of disc brakes in dissipating heat. When brake fade happens, your brake system can become unpredictable. Note, that doesn't immediately mean a lack of stopping power, but it certainly could cause you to lose control of your vehicle. Brake overheating typically occurs when you're riding your brakes a lot, let's say in heavy stop and go traffic or descending a grade. For instance, if you've ever gone down a steep mountainside, you may have noticed gravel or sand runoff lanes on the side of the road. Those are a final emergency measure for vehicles that have overheated their brakes and need a safe place to stop. But again, for casual driving on relatively level roads and outside of heavy traffic areas, a healthy drum brake system will perform just fine. So why do some vehicles have discs in the front and drums in the back? Ever had to slam on your brakes when you're going pretty fast? Then you already know that the vehicle transfers its weight forward as you slam on the brakes. In other words, when you slam on your brakes, all your stuff flies off the seat and onto the front floor, right? That means your front brakes are the ones doing most of the work when you're stopping. Even at a simple traffic light, which makes your front brakes heat up quicker and more prone to brake fade. This is why it's common for cars to have disc brakes in the front and drum brakes in the rear. The front discs carry the initial stress of the stopping motion, which generates the most friction and heat, and the rear drums follow up with additional power to bring the vehicle to a stop. So what about power brakes? One of the common misconceptions out there is that power brakes means more stopping power. And that's not exactly true. In reality, all a power brake booster does is amplify your pedal pressure which is a fancy way of saying it makes the pedal easier to press. So there's no extra stopping power per se that comes with power brakes. The advantage is, since the pedal's easier to press, you don't have to have the legs of a linebacker to bring your car to a quick stop. Non-power assist drum brakes on a healthy functioning brake system, once again, like what is equipped on this truck, are perfectly fine. If you don't mind a little leg workout, of course. And if you do find that your leg is getting tired on a power assist drum brake equipped vehicle, then don't be so quick to blame the drum brakes. Start by checking to make sure your vacuum power booster is functioning correctly. If you don't have power brake assist to begin with, and you'd like to make the pedal easier to press, 
Adding one can be easier and cheaper than swapping in a disc brake setup. Finally, let's talk about brake maintenance. It's important to note that we keep saying a healthy brake system. Regardless of a drum or disc setup, if you've got a faulty master cylinder, worn shoes or brittle or weeping brake lines, your stopping power will be significantly impaired. In other words, routinely check your brake system and be wary of warning signs like puddles on your garage floor or a squishy pedal feel. Brake maintenance is another factor to consider when talking about drum brakes. They can be a bit more involved to service than a rotor caliper setup. Not necessarily tougher, just different. Just like the drum brakes on this truck, older drum brakes that require manual adjustment should be checked once a year. While newer drums with self-adjusters and disc brakes automatically adjust as the brake material wears. More moving parts means that drum brakes are a bit more involved, but easy enough to work on once you get used to it. Summit Racing offers a variety of tools to help keep your drum brakes in perfect working order. Visit our website to view all the tools to make maintaining your drum brakes that much easier. So, should you switch from drum brakes to disc brakes? Now the question of whether you should ditch your drums for a disc brake setup is completely up to your driving style and capabilities. If you've got a classic that just sees casual cruising and occasional runs to the parts store across town, then your drum brakes are probably perfectly fine, providing they're in good operating condition. Alternatively, if your vehicle is a daily driver, then the performance and maintenance benefits of a disc brake swap becomes more appealing. More importantly, if you've dropped in a more powerful or heavier engine, changed the suspension geometry, or otherwise modified your vehicle from stock, it could significantly impact your stopping capability which means a disc brake setup can be a smart decision too. And of course, if you're building an autocrosser or a dedicated track car, then you should be thinking about a disc brake setup, but you probably already knew that. Finally, if you're building a show car or you've upgraded your original steel wheels for larger aluminum wheels, then you may want to consider upgrading to disc brakes also. Not only do they add to the look of your vehicle, but with larger wheels, you'll appreciate the stopping benefits of disc brakes. We talked at the start of this video about trade-offs, and the trade-off with a drum to disc brake conversion is time and cost. Good disc brake conversion kits start at several hundred dollars and go up quickly from there. They're not exactly easy to install either. Even an experienced mechanic should set aside a few hours and a handful of specialty tools to ensure the job gets done right. So make sure you consider those factors before committing to a disc brake conversion. The key takeaway from this video is that drum brakes aren't inherently bad, as long as they're in good shape and are serviced regularly. So whether you want to convert your drum brakes to disc brakes, or just maintain your current brakes, talk to us here at Summer Racing, and we'll be sure to guide you in the right direction.